Welcome to Wearables Weekly, episode 22. Uh, it is December 19th today, so happy holidays to everybody. Uh, we've got a nice big panel today, so we're going to have a lot of interesting discussions. Um, we've got uh, guest host uh, Virginia Poltrak from Pennsylvania Hello. on air with us. And also David Lee from California on, on with us as well. And our nice. and our usual our usual weekly lineup. We have Aaron from Texas. Hey everybody. <laughs> Cecilia from also from California. Thanks, guy. Good to be here. <laughs> and Keith Acorn. Hey everybody. And last but not least, Noble Ackerson. Hola, qué tal? So many people. Yeah, I know. It's a nice big panel today. <laughs> We've got a lot to cover, so it's kind of good that we have so many people. No, I've lost we're, we're making up for last week uh, not, not being around. So. Yes, and, we yeah. our three-week hiatus, uh, the, the holidays, well, at least Thanksgiving and the weeks surrounding Thanksgiving kind of, I don't know, not just on our butts. <laughs> <laughs> so, Virginia, um, if you don't mind giving us a little background about yourself, I know you're uh, you're an artist in, in Pennsylvania, and you work with David Lee designing G-Pop. I do. So I live in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Um, it's about an hour and a half east of Pittsburgh, very small town. And uh, I like to say that I just build stuff, and I use everything from pencils to computers to whatever. I just like taking on projects and building stuff, whether it's art or working on glassware, or just everything. Cool. So Virginia is a triple threat. She's an artist. She's a designer. She's a developer. <laughs> I try. She's she's a she's a triple threat. And David, well, David's just David. David's just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How are things going in San Francisco, David? Yeah, I'm I'm doing great. Um, I think um I had an appearance on uh, this podcast. Like in October or September? Yeah, you were you were with us a few months ago talking about G-pop. Yeah, and, it was in the very, it was very, it was very beginning. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting how uh, G-pop has had a the impact G-pop has had on glass. But we'll we'll kind of talk about this in a little bit. Uh, we do have a lot to cover in the news. Uh, again, being on a three-week hiatus, we've lots of happened. Actually, lots of ha lots has happened this week. Um, so starting with well, let's uh, Aaron. Did you want to talk about Wink Fee for a little bit? Yeah, pretty exciting. We uh, we launched yesterday on on my glass. Um, yeah, I, you know, I really expected us to launch with a with a big group of apps. I figured we'd you know it'd just be like a big bundle of apps went out at the same time, and it was it was only three, which made me even more excited. So that was, that was pretty cool. Um, it feels good to kind of be out there now, you know. Congratulations. That was a long time coming, but it's a really, really great app. Yeah. <laughs> I, felt like, I felt like we were in limbo for like three months, you know. Oh, so, yeah. It's, it's, it's rough, but it's it's awesome that that's out there now, and now we can start rolling out new features again, and yeah, I'm excited. we got some really cool... If, if you've been using WinkFeed at all up till now, you've seen us change a lot in the last month or so already with a brand new layout that, that looks much nicer. We added that you can launch from a website now, which is, or launch, open the website from the headline, which is kind of nice, uh, especially if there's a video. Has anybody done this yet? You get a, you get a headline that includes a video. Mm -hmm. So you open the website, and then you launch the YouTube video from that website, and you can watch... Whatever. So, like, I watched a podcast the other night, a live podcast on Glass, uh, really? the Android Central one. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, except the experience is not very good right now. So we'll try and fix that. But <laughs> like, you had the best way I found is you use the two finger head gesture, move to the YouTube link. You know, not play the video, but the actual YouTube link, and then launch the YouTube link. Then do the same thing and click play from there, and it works works pretty well. Um, but that's not, you know, that's, we'll, we'll do better. So, uh, yeah, one of my favorite features with uh, the WingFeed app, if you don't mind, is the sort of read it later, which, by the way, guys, if you're building glassware out there, 
uh, try to differentiate yourself uh, from the pack, and there are about you know half a dozen reader apps out there, and and yeah. Wingfeed certainly sets itself apart in that sense. So you use his pocket uh, yeah. to to allow that. Um, I think one of the one of the things that makes us kind of special as well is most of the readers that are out there are are site specific. So like CNN's got theirs out there. I think Mashable's got Velocity, uh, which does some cool stuff with social. Uh, you know, like hot triggers and, and trending topics and things like that, which we've actually built something very similar to uh, that, but, but it's not quite ready. You, we, we built that at your hackathon, actually, didn't we? Was Wings yes, you did. Your hackathon, that yeah. That was the first app that you that was from Wingfeed, but definitely yeah. uh, it was part of hacking it, Breaking Glass. That was definitely something that came from Breaking yeah, Glass. So, so we've already built that. That's there. Uh, and it's working. <laughs> I mean, it was working at that hackathon, so... Um, it's been yeah, a long time coming. Yeah. So Aaron, because because you you can capture feeds from any source, you can you might be like the future X reader, Google reader, but now on glass. Um, that's kind of our our, our plan. Um, you know, we're 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 doing it very different from anybody else who's become like an RSS reader reader, and and, and we're starting with the, you know glass, which is very headline specific. So right, um, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity to grow. Um, and it's gonna be exciting. You know, we're kind of laying out that that strategy uh, right now, and and figuring out what the what the long term big picture is gonna end up being. And you know, that changes sometimes from week to week, as you, I'm sure you guys are aware of as well. But uh, yes. it, in a startup, but I think we're we're trying to let, hammer out some some real plans and and build something that's really awesome and and do things that. You know, so like obviously we got to make money, but we want to do things that, you know, we're not going to charge you for search. We're not going to charge you for support or whatever. You know, we'll. You're gonna the the features we so, we, we charge for are going to be awesome. You know, we'll, we'll yeah. really use what the data we've got in cool ways that you know are our, our, our actual premium features. Like I'm so sick of so many places are like, oh yeah, now you got to pay a premium. For for support and search or something, you know, silly stuff like that. It's like that's not. There's nothing premium about that. So for those of you listening, you have that recorded. Wink feed will not charge <laughs> you for search. You can hold them to it. I, we will Steady. not charge for search, and we will not charge to add your own feeds. Uh, it, I we had that conversation today. I was like, I will never charge for search or <laughs> your feed. You know, and and glass will always be part of it. As you know, that's. I mean, I think you should be able to read your your feeds wherever you want, uh, and 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 kind of however you want. They're they're your feeds. That's your information. Uh, and then what we can do with how you're you're reading or how you're accessing that data, data, and and maybe what a lot of people are are looking at, we can use that information and do some cool stuff with it. You know, so for any explorers at. that are uh, that are excited and can't wait to get their hands on uh, Wink feed, where can they get that? Yeah. Yeah, try it out. Sorry, I'll ramble on about it all night. Throw out all the ideas that we've ever talked about. <laughs> so where can you get Wink Feed, uh, Aaron? Uh, it's on MyGlass. Download it from uh, MyGlass, which is on uh, the iTunes App Store and uh, Android Market now, or Play Store. Uh, yeah, I still call it the Android Market. <laughs> Google has, so Google has blessed it. They have. Yes, it has been launched. Uh, you can yes. also go straight to winkfeed.com and click the uh, sign in with Google Plus, and it'll it'll launch you from there. And did anybody notice our new settings? Oh man, they're so much better. You can actually manage your settings from mobile now. Yeah, so nice. um, that's one thing I was going to point out, Aaron, is that um, uh, when you build a glassware, you have to think about the control panel like experience and a sign up experience. And I think you guys nailed that down. It looks really good. Thank you. You know, that's so we started and we built a desktop site and I was like, guys, you know, people are going to manage their glassware from their phone. I mean, that you if you're and that would be a tip for anybody who's thinking about developing glassware, who is developing glassware, your interface outside of glassware should be mobile centric. Think mobile first and then if you're going to extend beyond that, go beyond there, but think mobile first. Totally agree with that. Yeah. Uh, and that was one of the first things I've, I've and that was that's actually been my big push lately is like we had to have the mobile ready sites done before launch. Like I was like, we can't launch with a site that doesn't look good on the phone, which our front page right now needs work, but uh, it's it's good enough and and the settings pages are working great now, which 
they weren't before. So I'm really happy with how things are, are turning out. And we've actually got a big site refresh coming up. We're you know going to launch some ways to stay com and communicate with with our users a little yes, bit better. So there is more to come with Wink. Oh, so much more. We should There's... really move on because I will not stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving so on. Just the last couple of days, I was quoted in Mashable. That was so awesome. Are you serious? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So, uh, well, I guess our news has been quite so cool. Although, cool <laughs> me. <laughs> um, so we, uh, Keith and I attended a uh, the 13 Magnus event this weekend, this Saturday, and uh, so Jarvis lives. For those of you who follow Ingress. I got out to level five. Yay! <laughs> and nick of time, thanks to Ivan Udi. I know, right? <laughs> Helped to do that. Uh, yeah, it, actually, it was kind of interesting. There were a lot of people with glass out there, which I guess is a little bit of crossover with uh, people that are into Ingress and into Google culture. But um, You're also in the Bay Area. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a massive party. I, it was very impressive, the, uh, the amount of time and energy and money that went into this thing. It was massive. I should have gone to the Dallas one. I, I I was going to, and then I didn't have anybody to go with and bailed. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, so I didn't quite realize how involved the storyline was. This is like, this was like a global thing. Like, there were people playing in Russia that were bringing back the little shards. <laughs> yeah, so... Did, did, you, did you follow the story? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we didn't follow this very closely, but what she was referring to was that there were these little shards that it... To, to bring back to a spot in San Francisco, and some people actually chartered a flight from like Russia to the U.S. to bring this little digital bit uh, with them. So, yeah, some people were very involved. Yeah, it was impressive. the The amount of effort was impressive, and I think there was a big there was a big event in Brazil too, where yeah. there was I think four shards that were brought to Brazil and eight that were brought to uh, San Fran. Yeah, I, I completely lost my faith. I don't know why. I just completely stopped playing Ingress as soon as I... After Google I.O., I'd, I'd hit um, level 8, I think, yeah. in February. And then at I.O., I just sort of lost interest. I need to get back into it. Well, no. you know, it's one of those games. It's so much more fun when there's a group of people. It's really yeah. hard to play on, especially when you're at level 8. You don't really have anything to work up to. You but know what's when you're with a group... That? You know what's sad about that statement? The, my entire, from level one to level eight, I played by myself, and I played while I was in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, DC, yeah. in DC, our traffic is stagnant. I think everywhere in the everywhere else in the world, it's just sort of moving slowly. We just sort of sit, and my route to work is just a lot of historical markets. So I ranked up very, very quickly. Wow, that's. <laughs> I would yeah. not openly admit that, by the way. <laughs> I, mean, I spent like last no. December driving around Fort Worth, building you know this network out. Like I owned half of the Metroplex at one point, and then it all got taken out in one day by some level eight. I was at level six by then. <laughs> some level eight from Dallas came out and like wiped out my whole area, and I was like, you know what? I'm not wasting any more gas or time on this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I remember well, I, last year we planted a bunch of, or we, we took over a bunch of portals in Florida. I yeah, back then there were, there were so few of them at the time. I think we went home for Thanksgiving when it was released, and we had pretty much every portal in Stewart, which is about six, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's about six post offices here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's grown a little bit. Uh, but with all the walking throughout the city, I really, really wished I would have had my Fitbit, but unfortunately it was no longer uh, supporting my... My step counts. Uh, on a side note, I do have a, a slightly used Fitbit. If anybody would like to uh, take this off my hands, <laughs> slightly used, <laughs> Some, <Yeah>. somewhere. <laughs> Unfortunately, it uh, it it, it uh, didn't like the biking so much. It's held up for a, a good year of my uh, my walking around, but uh, fell off on my way home one day. So, give me a good excuse to buy a new Fitbit. <laughs> nice. You're gonna get another Fitbit though. This is the new one. Actually, I, you know what's funny? I kind you're of thinking, wanted thinking, something like this to happen only because now that I have a, a phone that supports the Bluetooth uh, of, what's that, the low energy version, uh, now I can sync this with my phone instead of having to cradle it every week or so. I thought you would get the, the band. 
Like oh, the yeah, the phone? Force. I'm surprised. I went back and forth, but, you know, with all these other devices we're talking about, uh, I don't want to... Yeah, uh, true. It, it's valuable real Too estate. Much, you know? yeah. <laughs> it's real yeah, estate real right estate. now. This is real estate. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Actually, it's a, it's a very interesting topic, Keith, because um, you when you make a decision to go with a different platform, what happened to all the like, step counting that you've been doing in the past? Will that carry over? Like, what happened to the competition that you had with your friends? Like, well, you know, that's, this is could be become like a, a problem as well. Yeah, definitely. These companies, uh, you know, built their business model around not just selling you a product, but actually like giving you an environment to share your data and to compare it. So, you know, since I got another Fitbit, it would go into that same ecosystem. But if I wanted to buy one of the other uh, devices, and there are plenty that we've talked about. Um, yeah, I don't think there's an easy way to export that information and say take it over to, you know, uh, like Adidas has a smartwatch or, or yeah. yeah, Jabo, Nike or something like that. Is is there is there a company that has apps like like Edamom Mondo or Strava that are cross platform that support like Yeah, I was gonna say I have friends here in Temecula, California that built something called Sync Metrics and then with them mm -hmm. Everything can go together. Like everything you do in Runkeeper will go to Fitbit. Everything you do in Fitbit goes to Runkeeper. Everything is synced. It's called gotcha. sync metrics, and it's pretty cool for exactly for that situation. I, you know, now that you mention it, I have seen people do um, at some hackathons. They were syncing their Fitbit data to Glass and to other things. So uh, that must be accessible uh, at least through an API. But I don't know of any other uh, interface that, that puts them all together. They might be out there. If anybody has a recommendation, I'd be glad to uh, take that. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, uh, moving on to news. Uh, so XC12 came out today, and I have had not not had a chance to play with it. Um, but uh, a couple of the major features. So Wink is uh, so Wink is enabled, but it's only enabled for version two. So that's definitely. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to try uh, I uh, play it. I just did it. I just took a picture. I just winked. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I forgot that I had it. I enabled it earlier, but it works. Well, that's one benefit of upgrading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things. I think I, I I would have a really hard time winking to take a picture. I'm gonna have to just do a really like slow it. blink. I, I, I know. Take a picture is. I mean, how many actions do we need for take a picture in glass? I think right, I can get used to these. You guys try it seriously. I think no, it, I'm it, all for winking. I mean, we named our company Wink. Yeah. <laughs> wink for other stuff. You just want that gesture for yourselves. <laughs> no, no. I, well, yes, but um. <laughs> it can become like oh, a yes. more. You know why I like it? It's a little bit more of that uh, muscle memory that Glass has with these and with these. So yeah. I have a feeling that you can get that muscle memory trained. If you train yourself a little bit, it might be pretty comfortable to take pictures like that. So for those people that have used the winking, uh, that you could sideload an app to do winking uh, on the version 1 app previously. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've done it through that. Uh, it, you know, I had to keep reinstalling it, but I mean, exactly. after you calibrated it, it, it seemed to work at least for a little while. But I agree for with you on it for at least one reason, because um, I, don't, I don't like telling my glass to take a picture. Generally, I'll you know, push the button. But the one right. problem with that is you end up a lot of times like kind of twisting your glass a little bit crooked. Yes. So a lot of these pictures yeah. aren't quite straight. It's kind of nice to be able to just keep your head straight and wink. I guess as long as they allow developers access to it and, and we can and, and taking a photograph doesn't take priority over doing whatever they're gonna use it for, that's fine. I'm cool with that. So Aaron, exactly what day did Wink Feed launch on my glass? Yesterday, I think it was yesterday. Ah, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. It's Wink. just very coincidental that Winky was enabled today. Yes. yes. When you guys launched yesterday. Yeah. Winky was enabled two days ago. Two days oh, two ago. days ago. Yeah. It, launched, oh. it came out with XE12, and then we came out the day after XE12. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. For some reason, I thought it was today. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, though. I think I you just got it because you. That doesn't even matter. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I also tried today earlier when we were hanging out uh, with the with the wearables crew. Uh, I tried the hangout from Glass and it's it's pretty cool. I have to say I like it a lot. Hangouts from Glasses, I like it. Yeah. The text, the chat hangout from Glass. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so since you guys have some experience with that, the the description said you can do like uh, text, vi uh, video, and pictures. So have you tried out all those those different features? 
All I've used is text so far. All I've used is text so, so far. So are you yeah. speaking to text? Is that how it is? Yeah. You tap and you have like uh, the few last things that happen and you have a reply. You know, read aloud. If you also have a video call and a people. So yeah, you have all those things. I guess. Yeah. So there were some other uh, features there, Libby. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm reading through this. So I guess you can you can access the GDK apps directly now. Has anybody tried? Has anybody played around with that? I don't have any. What do you mean by access the GDK apps directly? Yeah. Can yeah. run GDK um, software directly. See, I again, I haven't played around with it yet. Oh, okay. What that means, what that means is, yeah. Now, if you develop GDK, so it's not a preview anymore. So you can develop a GDK app and side load it still, obviously, and then run. Right. Is it directly in that way, I guess? Um, or, let's oh, see what hold the, on. the notes say because I think on. before you could side load. I don't think you have to side load anymore. I think it will work with the OK Glass menu, right? Uh, their GDK says uh, developers can now build and run Glassware directly on Glass using newly released GDK. Uh, the GDK enables richer glassware. Um, yeah, it's not actually not that specific. I don't think there's a way to send an APK automatically. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know of a way to do that either. OK, so maybe it's just a uh, later in the future, that's something. This has been the first update since they had the GDK announcement. So maybe they were just kind of wrapping that all up into this one yeah. big announcement. Right, right. So I guess my question is whether it works on version 2 and not version 1 is kind of irre irrelevant mm -hmm. at this point. So uh, for Libby, you might appreciate this since you just got those um, headphones. You don't have them with you by chance. I, I do. Well, no, not in this room. They're actually in the next room. But yes, I do have them with me here. Cool. Yeah, so one of the other features was now if you have the, the uh, All Access, Google Music All Access Pass, uh, you can play any of the music they have in their catalog, which is pretty comprehensive. So. Uh, any music bands? That's a pretty big update. Yeah, I always have a hard time trying to figure, try, trying to remember which songs I like best uh, in order to call it out. No, I wish it, they also I have wish... radio and playlists. Now well. they have playlists, so that's I got that's the big thing. Oh, you got the headphones. Oh, nice. Yeah, and so I was like, eighty-five dollars for headphones is outrageous. That's so crazy. There's no way those they can be worth eighty-five dollars. And now that I have them, they're worth every penny. No. I, they don't. They don't fit my tiny ears, so I don't. I yeah, I've heard they don't. They're 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 great for people with big ears. I don't. I don't get the, my little ear hole. Doesn't really work for it. I have big ears. They're ear? not the <laughs> most comfortable. I will say that. <laughs> See, I I like them. I I so I don't. I can't wear most like the earbuds that stick in your ear. Those get uncomfortable really quickly. And I wore these all day and just kind of forgot I had them in. Because you can hear really well with the men as well. Want to do a little show and tell? One thing, one thing great about the Google Glass, I mean the Google Glass official um, the earphone is that, um, like like what look at look at Keith. There's a connection between your head and your body, right? So when you actually turn around, the like you know your the cord will follow you around. But if you have everything on top, it's actually not connected with your body, so it's very comfortable to actually wear it around. So I think I actually, um, from that perspective, that's a win. Since you mentioned that, it's true. There's actually several headphones that I've owned that literally are just a little too short. Like if it's in, if my phone's in my pocket, and I turn and like pull it out of the phone. So simply like this, having it all localized is a good benefit. Oh, yeah. So pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're lovely, Aaron. So, so they wrap up behind the neck, right? Especially especially yeah. when you're working out and when you wear your phone, it's such a pain. In, it's a pain in the butt, but. I mean, you could go in front well, if you want. Yeah, um, I, will, so yeah, so much I wear mine in front. I do wear mine in front because it doesn't. It messes with my hair when I wear it in the back. Mm -hmm. But you're right, David. Like when you're working out, it doesn't get in the way. So. What so color? How, how have you noticed the uh, the battery life being when you play music? I've noticed. I've actually um, tested that quite extensively. So. What I like to do is I'm um, building fitness software, so I like to play the you know say okay glass listen to whatever um, George Strait, and then I um, say you know I start my workout and it only lasts a good 25 30 minutes, and I'm critically low on my battery. Mm -hmm. uh, with the music it's uh, by itself, I get a little over 30 to 45 minutes, and then it's completely, uh, battery's completely drained. Oh, that's, that's too bad. Good. Yeah, that's too bad. 
Because if you are listening to the music with the headphones, you definitely can't have it tethered to an extended battery. You know, exactly. I wonder, that's a disadvantage. I, I so. wonder if one of the things they could do to maybe make that last a little longer is if it's pulling all this data, like live streaming it to your glass, uh, it's probably using a lot more than it would, uh, you know, if you had it like some cache locally. Um, I mean, it's a pretty good amount of memory inside glass. Maybe at least the, your, your favorite songs, you could have them loaded and last a little bit longer. Maybe. I still haven't been able to successfully uh, call up my custom playlists. I don't know whether that has changed within the last that's couple That's supposed days. to be new. Yeah, that's supposed to be working better on XP, but I haven't tried it either. Yeah, I was very unsuccessful calling my uh, my bluegrass oh, my glue my bluegrass channel. Oh my god, that's really <laughs> bluegrass. <laughs> Don't do that to us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next story. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Time to move on. <laughs> unofficial, the unofficial facial recognition app for glass. Um, so a few months ago, Google had announced that uh, Glass will not do facial recognition. So of course, it says. So is this a? It looks like this is a third party app. It yeah. is. It's yeah. very much a third party. And app. it it was bound to happen. It was definitely going to happen. Um, yeah. It honestly, it's one of those things that I think we all were kind of just waiting, even though Google has. Google themselves have uh, not enabled it. It was bound to happen. I mean, well, it, it's, it's not that they they would enable it, right? It, you mm -hmm. think about it this way: you've got a computing device that has a camera and processing power uh, and access to the internet. So it was absolutely bound to happen. It was out of Google's control uh, from exactly. The and exactly. the second they they announced that, um, you know, even before they announced the GDK. Uh, there were hackathons with people uh, building such things, but this this example is uh, sleazy. The, I'm sorry. It's a sleazy example. I don't like the date where they're pulling their data from. Where are they? Where are they pulling you their data? Like dirty dating sites, criminal records. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And that was that was what I, I was going to bring up is that it makes a lot of sense that Google will regulate because in a way I imagine that we are going to say, okay, my Google profile, that's my picture, and I allow everybody to recognize me, or I don't. Right. And that's very important that we can do that. I think that would be a really good compromise and something Google could jump on without getting too much flack. So that's a good solution. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with facial recognition. I'm not okay with the way they're doing facial recognition. And there's another thing too. It's it kind of silly that you're looking in a in a database with two and a half million people. If I enable my location, you're gonna be looking only at two hundred people, and you're gonna have a right. match like this. Yeah. Yeah. So a little more background on how this one worked. I guess uh, from the demo, it looked like they were able to. It would just run all the time, and if you look around, it would identify faces in front of you, like if you had a picture mm -hmm. of somebody. Um, it'll take the picture and send it off to their server where they do the analysis to figure out who that person is, though. So it's not completely all done on glass. That'd probably be a little bit hefty. Which, that's uh, probably the only way to do it, I think. Yeah. yeah. And but, I wonder how... But, because you have to match dynamically. You, want to, you don't want to have two million people in your glass images. You want to go to a server and match with who is in the area at the moment. Right. And I also wonder how, how accurate it is. I mean, Google, when they're doing facial recognition themselves, they're off all the time. So, <laughs> yeah, and even so, when they use, because we know that they do use GPS. We figured that Google Plus does use GPS when, because it, it started suggesting people that are very different, but they were at the same place. So we started to figure there's something there that they're already doing. But they're seen only, bad, you're right. I only seem to get matched uh, incorrectly with people that I happen to also follow. But there are a couple people, uh, and surprisingly a couple of women, that I keep getting identified as. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, you've gotten identified with cartoon characters. Uh, well, I mean, they've been yeah. way off on something more. That's funny. Yeah. Interesting. But, that, but no, nothing's as bad as uh, Noble and Ivan. Those those two are like. Oh, they're twins. And they are twins and all, but you know. <laughs> it's kind of like a big data. Um, it's not really about recognizing the facial. I mean, it's more of like you know, what do you do with that after you recognize somebody's somebody, right? I mean, I think that's going to be more controversial 
recognizing somebody's self is not really, you know, surprising. Right, exactly. I'm not sure. What you're going to do is pretty yeah. obvious. You're going to pull information from, from social networks and, and, you know, right. all sorts of information, whatever yeah, you want to know. When, how long until Wingman we comes out? We're talking about the person who's actually you know, identifying somebody with the glass. What is he going to do with this information? I think that's going to be more controversial. Like, you know, I would build Winkman. You'd go out to the bar, and it would show you single, and have like little symbols, what they're interested <laughs> in. <laughs> oh. Instead of Wingman. Aaron, man, you need to register that name right now. You need to yeah. register that domain it's right funny. now. <laughs> All right. Add it to the list. We've got like 40. <laughs> <laughs> so many apps to build. So little time. There was just a uh, article in Esquire magazine. Did you guys read this? That a guy was uh, lent his glass to a single friend and sent him into a bar, and was telling his friend like his friend would get the name and he would Google the person and say like, "Oh, you're an Aquarius and like you like oh, this wow. band." And she was like, "How do you know that?" And I'm like, "No, this is not the press that we need. Like, please don't <laughs> encourage this behavior, right?" Oh. But, Technology for creepers. That oh, is great. Right. Exactly what we need. <laughs> that's exactly it. Truth of the matter, though, is that's something you can do on your phone too. That's right. just because it's glass. It's you know. That's true. But yeah. yeah. So I'm guessing uh, Virginia. I'm guessing the person was doing like a hangout with his with his buddy or something. He was. He was. And then of course they had um, a little bit of trouble, and then it got cut off. And then uh, apparently the night went better after the Google Glass cut out. But um, yeah, the article was like ten things you should not do with Google Glass, and and one of the other things was um like a poker game, he was cheating in a poker game. Oh, yeah. I read that for a part of that, yeah. That was a good article. <laughs> that, was a, that was a very good article. Yeah, that's... Awkward silence. <laughs> yeah, I totally took We're all thinking about the things that we can do now with glass. <laughs> okay. We went from Thank practical you. applications to bars and poker, I apologize. <laughs> no, I mean, I you know, I think there's there's... You could build a, a database that you know while you're playing poker. Although I would never play poker with somebody wearing glass. No way. Yeah, that's just. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. No. Too easy. Although if you apparently if you're in Florida in the location I'm at, most people don't know what Google Glass is, which is kind of it's kind of strange. I've been able to wear it out, and I was only stopped twice today. But they kind yeah. of figured it has a camera, right? After being with you for a little bit, they figured, oh, that has a camera. There's something fishy about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, what if you could Johnstown. use the gesture and the camera while you, you launch a poker app, you look at your cards, you wink, it take it looks at it it takes a snapshot of the, the cards and then it tells you, you know, how you should play your hand. <laughs> That'd be perfect for me. I I would still so lose poker. I'm a terrible <laughs> Wink poker, dang it, gotta buy that one now. Break that down, break that down. There goes all my money. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stop talking about ideas here on the show. That's what we do, man. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of other things you probably shouldn't do with glass, driving being banned in Illinois. That's kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, it is. I think um Did it did it pass the house? No, no. No, it was introduced. It, it was right. introduced. It was it was just introduced right now. And that's, still... that's, that's one. This is a hop on my soapbox here. Like that's one one distinction that that is never made in the press because things get quickly sensationalized and we get super emotionally caught up in it. If, if a bill is introduced, you know, just like it was in West Virginia, it doesn't make it a law, right? It, it, it's something it, right. that that, that it's uh, just an intention, obviously, but. Depends and and it's that. actually, to be honest, it's actually responsible for bills like that to be introduced into different legislatures. And the reason is, is that uh, um, people who would traditionally never talk about this and make knee-jerk reactions and try to pass laws get to debate the merits of the technology itself. So I think in its, uh, in, in its own right, it's a good thing. That's true. That's a very yeah, good point. Agree. I don't agree. In the, in, well, in a way, they're already introducing the law. Uh, with an intention of prohibit when they don't understand it. And I think it's very sad that legislators would be 
passing laws without even understanding what they're doing with the laws. Like, well, they're not I'm, passing it, no. That's, well, that's they're even attempting. But they're, they're, even when they submit the law, they could as well, might as well submit a law that says, accept these. Why, why they already have an intention about it? They should submit a, a, a law that it will study the case, maybe. It is very reactionary, though. You're right. It's like the restaurants. It's the same sort of thing, that without any sort of understanding or comprehension or acknowledgement of anything, it's just it's bad. Yeah, because if this was a hard drive, you, want, you don't want to try it. But. Especially when it comes to the restaurants. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> when it comes to, to law, I think definitely legislators should be... Uh, you know, trying to legislate behavior, not necessarily technology. So, was this one? Did it specifically say glass or like? This one. This one was glass? specific for glass, apparently. Yes. Yeah. See, I think you know, and, and certainly we could talk about this at length. But I, I think. Or, or not. They, they could, Sorry, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, if you wanted to say that it's illegal to you know to be doing certain things behind the wheel, but not necessarily target just glass or just a certain mm -hmm. type of display. Yeah, and that would be smart because we know there's going to be so many others. I think it's more generic than that, but it's addressing the whole set of things that have to do with having a visor. And, um, I, I agree with Noble that it should be discussed, I, but I agree with Cecilia that you, you shouldn't be introducing laws if you don't fully understand what you're introducing law about. But my, my, my point is people are going to be stupid. People are going to introduce laws that they don't understand. People fear what we don't understand. It's just human nature. The fact that they introduce it into a le into legislature, assuming people aren't just gonna just rubber stamp and, and pass it without understanding it, that that's understandable, and I completely agree there. But a responsible um, institution should sort of take the time to look at all the way the advantages and the disadvantages of of passing it. You know, how does it hurt? Should we right, allow? But, but no, well, right from the start, right from the start, they are. You have this is not people. This is a legislator that is right. trying to pass a law. Is attempting right. to pass a law. It's attempting to convince that's they, others that's what they do. about a yeah. point of view. Yeah, and that's what we don't agree here, and that's that's what we're saying. So in in DC, in not sorry, in, in the city of Alexandria, oh, you not even us. I shall talk. Give another example. Recently, I believe in uh, New York City. They introduced a a law to ban e-cigarettes, and now I don't really give a shit about e-cigarettes. I just really don't even get the. I don't smoke, so I don't really care. Um, but they introduced the law uh, to, or or a bill, I should say, to ban e-cigarettes, and that sparked a debate uh, with people who were pro e-cigarettes and against e-cigarettes. Note that we don't really understand if e-cigarettes are harmful for the people who are smoking it or secondhand, whatever. What that's doing now is putting that uh, uh, bill on the table for debate and whatever the outcome. And that, that, that what I'm saying that is, is that that's going to happen. That's going right. to happen. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I can't... Um, so I, mean, I hate... I, I completely, I'm just playing devil's advocate here, but I, I hate uh, the fact that uh, on both sides, that on one side that we would... Uh, not want any of this to come uh, in front of uh, our law lawmakers, which is unrealistic. And then two, uh, that we lawmakers would try to, um, you know, pass things that they don't really have a full full grasp of because of, you know, either lobbyists or or just pure ignorance. Right, because we've never done that before in this country. Pass oh, a law that was so my pure ignorance. <laughs> If you just look at the automobile history, uh, when the first time the car was, um, you know, um, invented, people were scared because, like, you know, it was a killing machine basically, mm -hmm. and nobody was manufacturing car at the time because people were scared, nobody was buying it. But then, when the regulation and a restriction was introduced, when the law was in place, that's when people felt more safe and more comfortable to start driving. That's when they start manufacturing more cars. So this, um, you know, the this ban in uh, Illinois might look bad from like you know from the short term perspective, but if you look at a long term perspective, we are actually setting the right expectation and the right law for this type of technology to be like introduced and work to be used. So um so we I think the best thing is just like you know let's just wait and see where this restriction goes. Like you know mm. well certainly and people in Illinois should absolutely start lobbying their 
their representatives. And I think some of them, well. like Patios, are there's a good there's a good group of Soggy in Illinois that they're already kind of offering for. Awesome. I think it's Senator Silverstein to to mm -hmm. have us and try it. If you're and in we, if you're in Illinois, if you're if you're in Chicago, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Contact you. Contact you. There's Illinois, New Jersey, Delaware, and West Virginia uh, mm -hmm. have all had had legislatures. And London, <laughs> for those you want to talk about ridiculous. Oh, I did see that. Available on the, <laughs> outside <laughs> the U.S. <laughs> and they've already passed, not introduced, passed <laughs> uh, 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 complete laws regarding head-mounted displays. And just to give you an idea of how 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 early they were to that, we talked about that in our second episode of this show back in like June. Are you talking about UK? Yes. Yeah. But I don't I think, think they passed the law. I think it was the same situation where they introduced there we go. the law. There we go. All right, so perfect. That actually, case in point, that brought up a debate. Hopefully, and they learned that. Oh wait, this thing isn't big bad evil after all. <laughs> well, and I think I mean there sh there probably should be some stipulations like you can't respond to text messages. Oh no 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 no. That's a freaking that's uh, 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 just a domino effect to just hell on earth. Like yeah. that, I, I'll tell you, it's it, like Keith said. Keith said it perfectly. It's be uh, legislate behavior, not technology. Glass has a mechanism. If you guys don't know, this is you know Glass Education 101, right? Glass has a mechanism where you can just tap the power button and it locks uh, the device from any touch screen actions. If you feel really, really um, you know uh, uh, uncertain of yourself and you feel like you're going to start futzing around with your glass while you're driving or operating something to uh, endanger somebody else's life lock the thing or turn it off and shove it on your face and drive. The problem is people, not the technology. It really pisses me off when we start nitpicking certain no, people. No, but I, I agree that the, it is the people that are the problem, but the people aren't going to turn it off. So well, if, then, you, make the, then if don't, you make the technology like smart enough to make it safe and you say, okay, yeah, I well, like we've, that. Built, we've built it, a, there is now a driving monitor. Right. If you're going yeah. over a certain speed and you're, and you're the driver or, or you launch the driving app, if you're not watching the driving you know, app, then you, you know face what, the... what's going to happen then? You're going to have a situation where someone's in the passenger seat trying to figure out, wearing glass for the first time, trying to figure out how to use glass, and is, is going to have all kinds of confusion. When... No, because you can easily suggest, Nobel, you can easily say, hey, we, we see that you are kind of going at 70 miles per hour. Would you like to enable your driving mode? Right. And I think, I think you have the choice there, and I think it would be safe enough, because uh, the reality is... Um, if, if used incorrectly, it can be a dangerous thing, obviously. And uh, especially for people that just got glass, they go in the street, they think it's a perfect device, they got to get trained. And this isn't uh, you know, a completely new idea. We've had to deal with this when it came to like GPS in cars right. and certain type of you know, interfaces people had to interact with. You know, where sometimes they'll be able to lock certain functions when you're driving, mm -hmm. but otherwise they do want the passenger to be able to control it or something like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, you just have to. At some point, you have to trust people to behave yeah, that's, properly. That's yeah. Like, yeah, that's just like saying. Actually, they did something similar to what you guys are talking about, what Cecilia and Aaron are talking about with GPSs with some vehicles, right? So, mm -hmm. and some of my vehicles that I've purchased in the past and my current vehicle, I can't use the navigation while I'm driving because it detects ah. the car is going past. Uh, a certain and so to be honest, as a passenger. To to be honest, sometimes I want to bite the face of uh, <laughs> of, of, uh, of every single engineer who thought of that idea because it's actually more dangerous in that but, circumstance for me to pull, find somewhere to pull over to do what I need to do within the time crunch that I got. And 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 frankly, if I have a passenger in the seat, why don't you go the extra mile and enable it for the passenger if you're going to be a nanny? Uh, 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 I don't that know. Not a good I, I, just, I agree 100%. I, yes, I, I completely agree. I've been in rental cars that have that feature, and it is the most frustrating thing ever. It's but actually it more say, dangerous. It's actually it more dangerous. If you're driving, we recommend launching this app. If you're not driving, please dismiss or something like that. You know, you know swipe that down to dismiss. That introduces uh, more complexity with the core of the app. Actually, Think about why, even in the interface of a, on, a, on a cell phone, why that isn't a, a, acceptable, where you'll start getting pop-ups to say, oh, it looks like you're driving. Actually use an app that does this, uh, what you guys are talking about, very, very 
uh, elegantly, and it is called Agent. Uh, it costs like four ninety nine. It's a little too expensive, but it it, it sort of uses Bluetooth. Uh, uh, if you have Bluetooth in your car, to to sort of help. Yeah. Uh, doing that and it curtails some of that, but I ought to do that, right? So maybe right. The, uh, the answer is glassware that someone can build to help right. people uh, uh, make that 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 safe move. But at the end of the day, it is the person's choice to put that on there. It shouldn't be imposed uh, uh, and and sort of it have all be kinds imposed, of. But I, I just it want sounds to, like a Samsung. Yeah, I agree. It should be a thirty third party app. Uh, I just that's, want to point I, out that's what I was referring to the whole time. Yeah. The, the limitations that we're talking about here are, are actually put on there by the manufacturers more for their liability. Right. Um, if, they, if they were actually like legally required to be there, it'd be even that much harder to, to get around those sorts of things. Right. And that's what this is all about. Like, you know, once you start creating those rules and then lawmakers get a hold of that, wait until you see what kind of, what kind of interface Google Glass is going to have while you're driving or while you're riding a bike and going over five miles an hour on your bike. Right. Oh, speaking of Cecilia, do you have any updates on your uh, on your verdict? No, I don't know if I ever shared that on uh, January 16th we will be in court with the, my traffic guys, my the lawyers oh, okay. that are helping me. So that's that's the final decision where the judge will just decide. Very cool. Very cool. So I'm gonna let's table this debate for tonight. Yes. Uh, no, we let's got, keep going. <laughs> you can go we ahead, no, we'll keep it's going. Almost, and we'll just have to mute your mic. <laughs> we need to get to our guests. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Awesome we might even, we might even want to skip all these little devices if you just want to do that. Let's do that. Let's just because these devices are still going to be there. Next yes. Time. Absolutely. None Absolutely. of them are that interesting, anyways. No, and I want to talk to I want to talk to Dave in Virginia because they've got some really cool G pops out right now. What? Yeah, they do. <laughs> So as we mentioned earlier, Virginia is an artist and a designer and a developer, and she came up with uh, a couple of G pops for the uh, for the for the holiday season. I've I've actually got one on right now, and I think Keith's got a couple more. Mm -hmm. So this is one of her designs. Unfortunately, I've got a lag on my <laughs> computer right now, so I'm not sure if this is showing properly. But and, and maybe we should ask uh, David to remind us a little bit about what G pops are and. Uh... And what G-POP stands for? What does G-POP stand for, David? So you started as um, you know, glass pop to make your glass pop, like you know. But um, we are expanding our line, so luckily we were just able to change that name to Gadget Pop. Now we are um, actually handling like a Pebble and other wearable device as well. Oh, that's awesome! Because I was actually going to ask you about that. I just got this Pebble, and I was thinking, you know, it'd be perfect to have like a little G-POP sort of thing around here. Maybe these are head of you, yeah. Keith. <laughs> David's got a plan. David's got a plan. Uh, I just want to thank David real quick. He sent me this really awesome uh, R2D2 inspired uh, uh, G pop here, which is just it's it's my current favorite. But you know that changes that so really frequently. Awesome. The, the, Love so the R2. Awesome. Yeah, so the first time I saw those on Google Plus, I was like, I forget who posted it, and I thought that is genius. Like nobody's doing that. That is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my genius entire pop. life. And who is this man, and how can I speak to him? But so then it was lovely because we met, and David is great, and we've been having a lot of fun making it. So those yeah. are your your designs. Well, actually, you know, uh, um, this um, we're kind of like you know spending time interviewing right now. I actually like to officially announce that um, Virginia is actually joining G Pop as a um, creative director slash co-founder. Wow. 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 Very exciting. And, uh, Very exciting. Very excited about well, that. Actually, uh, this was a huge acquisition for us because of her reputation on G Plus, and she's actually a glass owner. So that um, I'm actually, you know, we are actually working with the Glass Explorer to get something started. Not like you know what you guys are doing at a uh, uh, link speed as well. So this was um, a huge news for our team this week. That's yeah, great. Awesome. I like how the so the newer G Pops. Uh, I like how you're trying to mimic the texture of glass itself. Right with the matte, yeah, the mm -hmm. finish. Yeah, so yeah, for those so of you well, who haven't gotten a G-pop in a while, it actually, so the previous ones were a bit more shy, glossy, mm -hmm. and so it, the, it stuck a little bit more when you were, when you were surfing on it. But the newer ones, again, it, it, you, can, you can go through your glass much faster, which is actually really nice. I gotta try it. 
one question that people were asking on some of the on G plus posts: uh, Will you guys accept people to do their own designs and imprint them on your website or something and get yeah, them? Yeah, that's that's, a, that's that's on our to do list right now. So I mean, we have a lot to tackle. So yeah, but but you you guys understand from the like software development as well. Like you know, it's it's not our priority right now. Yeah. So, yeah. But 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 they they'll they'll come in in the future. But we've been actually accepting okay. some custom works as well. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I actually want to uh, talk to actually you guys in a wing fit as well, because um, I actually wants to provide um, the custom like the G pops, like you know, for free basically. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Have you something we can talk about? Have you thought about doing anything with the little earbuds? Because I thought it might be cool. Yeah, to yeah, do yeah. Just actually, like a logo. Yeah, we are working with um. 3D printing company, um, they're actually Glass Explorer as well, uh, Ryan and Alex. So nice. we are in talk to um, uh, actually um, print a different type of um, earbud. So it's going to have like, you know, smiley face or huh. peace sign instead of um, glass and logo and uh, different colors as well. And yeah, then, you the know, prototypes look amazing. I, this is what it's like to talk to David though. Like, you're like, oh, I have an idea. I want to talk to David about this. And then he's like, oh, yeah, I already figured that out. This is what we're gonna do. Here's what's happening. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> hey Virginia, can we see what your uh, G pop looks like? Oh yes. I have a bunch. I switch mine up all the time. This one is um. Actually, I forget oh, the name of this one. Very pretty. That is crazy. Yeah, I like this one. That looks really good. And you designed this yourself, Virginia? Uh, this is actually not one of my designs. Okay. Um, so far, I just have the flowers and snowflakes and um, the New Year's. I love are the, the ones New that are printed. Nice. But right. there's a bunch that I have uh, up on my artboard currently that are in production. I haven't seen the New Year's ones. Has everybody seen the New Year's but me? Those the were the ones in the chat. Oh, you already packed that up. You know, right? I packed it tomorrow. up for my. I'm traveling tomorrow. But uh, do you have one, David, by chance? Uh, for the, the New, New Year's? Year's uh, giveaway one? Let me, let me see oh yeah, so uh, G-Pop, I think you guys are running a campaign right now uh, oh, yeah. for the Happy New Year. Uh, cool. If you if you tag an explorer, you will get a free G-Pop. And it's a pretty cool you design. Have to share from the yeah, you have to find the original post from G-Pop and do a share from there tagging an explorer. Well, actually, you can kind of reshare the same share bin that you see. You just yeah. So you don't have to actually really find the original. Somebody so this is so this is what we have right now. No, so boy, I will tag you. I think everybody on this board has been tagged. Uh, Nobody's been tagged, yeah. So yes, far, 150 people have been tagged. So um, you, you, it's great. Uh, I would love great. to see so, the ripple, uh, the ripples from that reshare. Are people basically resharing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The actual post? That Thank should you. be crazy. You should share that those those uh, stats. The results. You should definitely share the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, definitely something. This is why you know you guys can you know do a similar type of marketing effort, like you know, and right. try to get out, out of your own network. That actually that's what helped me the most because um, I've been already everybody in my network already know G pop, so I need to find a way to get outside of my network. Get outside. Network. Network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One idea. Yeah, I think uh, it was brilliant. One idea, yeah, one idea, David, would be um, R slash um, Google Glass on Reddit. Uh, definitely on don't, Reddit, just, yes. don't don't go in trying to spam them first, but definitely join the community, get to know the culture there, and 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 sort of run the campaigns. It's a it, there's no intersection. I found that there's no intersection. There's no big intersection of uh, the G plus people, Twitter people. And of course, um, the Reddit people. So definitely, uh, sort of broaden your horizons there. Like I'm just, just tell Google. Tell them that I know you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just, just tell them you know Noble. Yeah, you know, you just hook you up. <laughs> There's a bunch of um, art and design communities that I post online as well that aren't. They're sort of totally removed from the G Plus Glass Explorer communities. Um, but I would start posting the designs, and I was so pleased that people right away were like, that is an awesome idea. They were so excited about it. And even a bunch of designers reached out like, um, I would like to be a part of that. Like, great. We will, you know. Speaking we, of we art communities, Virginia, so, I, so you're an artist mm -hmm. as well. And I've seen some of, 
I think you sell a lot of your artwork. They're like the little postcards that are really awesome. Yep. So thank you. Just a question. So you do a lot of birds, a lot of owls. Yeah. Is so I get story behind that. This is what happened. So um, so actually, almost one year ago today, right before Christmas, uh, I lost my job, and I was so sad. But um, talked to my husband, and I was like, I will go freelance, right? And so I talked to a bunch of artists and designers, and they said, here's what you have to do. You always have to stay busy and always have projects. Even if it's just a personal project for promotion, just stay busy. So I said, all right, I'll make a list of all these things that I will work on. And my list was um, birds and Star Wars characters. So if I ever didn't have something to work on, that's what I was going to do, because you can never run out of Star Wars characters. So I have every drawing of every character, or if I can't think of something, I would just draw a bird. Because as long as you're doing the work right, it counts. So it's either on the computer or on the paper. Do one or the other, but you have to always do something just to like keep busy and keep promoting yourself. So that's where the birds and the Star Wars stuff comes from. Oh, that's okay. inspiring, Eugenia. <laughs> wow, good grab, David. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks, Dad. Seriously, I, I, Virginia, I want you to come work with me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? nice. Let's do it. Everybody wanted her. I just snagged her right away, man. Well, yeah. this was the funny thing, too. So I had never heard of Glass, and then I saw the promotional video, and I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my whole life, and I need a pair, and I'm just going to never take them off and just make a ton of stuff, and I don't know. It'll work out. And so far, that was my plan, and it's working. So that's good. So now if you're not working on something else, you're designing for G-Pop. Exactly, and it's awesome. So Keep making that's, Star uh, Wars characters for G-Pop. That, that, uh, that the R2-D2 cool. one's amazing. I think a Storm... Yeah. I'd, love, I'd love a Stormtrooper one that uses the, the color of the the device as well, you know, and like accents itself, maybe? That would be cool. I don't know. There's hey, so David, many, right, there's David so many things that you not can something do with Star Wars. Do. I love David, it. David, I've got a question for you and Virginia um, regarding licen licensing. Licensing, yes. Is this one of those just situations where, you know, like Alexis Ohanian, you're just asking, not asking permission and just doing it, and if you get sued, that's a good problem to have, or, or how are you approaching licensing? So, well, we're looking at a different stage right now in terms of business. So, like, we haven't even hit the seed round funding yet. So, we're publicly right now looking for zero round, but till we actually hit that, like, you know, our, my, our company is not a real company. So, like, you know, till we hit that, we are actually, you know, putting all our concepts out there, but once we start raising the zero round funding, everything's going to be taken down, everything's going to be our work. Okay. Which is going to be like a month or so. Makes sense. Cool. Mm -hmm. So another thing, I, Virginia, I wanted to talk to you about that I thought was absolutely genius. So you also started designing uh, cards for uh, vignette pictures. Vignettes. So that was really funny as well because I saw the post that um, Teresa and Sarah had made about, um, like, hey, does anybody have a minute to put this together? And um, the timing was uncanny because I had also just done our full track family holiday cards. So I had a whole table full of, like, typography and colors and, right, all, basically everything that was in the holiday vignette package. So I was like, the imagers are already built. This is great. So yeah, I you said, got it done so fast. We were actually talking about throwing something together, and it was like you put yours out while we were talking about it. it was like I'm a little it. neurotic, like I'm like I will sit and do it, and then right, like nothing else happens until it's done. It's a little bit crazy, but um, yeah. I was just excited that people liked it, and then it was like, well, that was great, and now it's built and it works, and I have. 2,000 other images that could be used for something. So, like the quotes have little um, drawings in the background, and um, the business one. And um, Laura Oakley, who is lovely, I don't know if you guys follow her. She's on Google Plus. She's an artist and a glass explorer and a designer. And she did a bundle that was like beautiful graphics. So, we put that in there. Um, that one's been really fun, and it was posted on Android Central, which was very exciting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. That was very cool. That is something that if, if somebody can come out with just a stack of designs that people can pin on their glass and just use every, right? whenever they so, have and it. Actually, yeah. um, 
And I would like you guys to weigh in on this also. I don't know if you have a bunch of the bundles pinned, but um, somebody made the comment yesterday, okay, now I have all these bundles in my timeline, and it's kind of clogging it up, so maybe there's something we could do about that. So I'm um, looking into you go on the website and just pick the pictures that you want, so you basically customize the bundle that gets sent. Right? Instead of just getting a whole bunch of everything, you just pick what you want. And so then hopefully that way it cuts down on the clutter that's on the glass. Yeah, I'm thinking it would make a really cool app, actually. I know a while back uh, I worked with another developer that did something similar with videos. So it would send a stack of videos to your glass uh, okay. through, through a mobile site. And that's definitely something that can be done here. And I, we could talk about this more when we're not on air extensively, right, right. but yeah, I think that there's definitely a lot it of potential like, there. sounds like flash stacks. Yeah, exactly. It does. <laughs> it does sound like flash stacks. Yeah, I, yeah, I see the vignettes working better as a uh, either an external interface where you can send them whenever you're, you know, like, okay, I want this, I pull up the Android app and I send the one I want, or it's a native right. app. That, well, you know, uh, I'll point out one thing I've, I've used for this purpose a little bit. If you do a Google search for uh, send to glass, uh, the yeah. first result is uh, it's actually a Chrome web store app, and um, you can basically send text or any picture you want. And it'll yeah. send it to glass like this. That's, it's, it's, you have to find the picture. It's not like you know, provided. It's or, not like necessarily customized for glass, like what yeah. Virginia is doing. But, um, but uh, it, it was very useful because, you know, at certain events, it's nice to be able to have a consistent tag that you're using. Like at the Big Ender Barbecue, uh, yeah. Libby and I were, were trying to, like, have a little vignette of the barbecue logo and stuff. Yeah, yeah so and it was I did that the other day, and I was doing something, yeah. and what I did is I did a Google search for it. And so then it has the word that you search. It has what you searched for and an image usually or, like, the you know, a couple of images. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so then I'll vignette that. Yeah. Uh, People have gotten really creative should, making this happen, right? You should see at the uh, at the barbecue, Libby was doing something similar. Except she was pulling up your actual web page, like yeah. moving around and on the glass to the, the part of the page, and then taking yeah, pictures. Yeah, pulling the it icon. Time. It was painful. It was really yeah. bad. <laughs> so that's a really good point. So we already have glass integration with our app. Uh, we didn't really use it, but. Uh, it's our, you've already, so we already we already did that. We could easily say, okay, when once you enable the the app or once you enable it on glass, you could just send a card that is our you know your vignette for the event. You know that. that or, or say for next year's barbecue, you know you could just have a simple glassware where you know you log in, press the button, it sends just a card. So that way everybody can share the same card or set of cards. Right. Well, that, that's and be cool. able to pin it yeah, yeah. to the front of your timeline because that's. Yeah. That would be key, so that when you're not searching back and forth, because that that's what I ended up doing. Just and it can also searching. be consistent between like lots of people instead of everybody having their own different version of it. So, yeah, we, we could like probably build it into the Android app as well. Just whenever you need the card, send to glass, yeah. or I think pinning it in a timeline would be the best way to go, though. For sure. Yeah. yeah, my whole timeline right now is just image. I can't find anything from like testing before each release, and like, I don't know. <laughs> Mine's all RSS feeds. We'll like, start over. It's cool. <laughs> I have like eleven RSS feeds going right now. <laughs> Get lots of notifications. But what what um Virginia is doing is amazing because um now you can totally see like this ecosystem around Glass because um like Glass hardware or uh, like a, a hardware engineers built it right. And the software engineers like you guys were building now, like, you know, softwares. Now, like, the designers and artists are emerging, like, you know, after the software wave. So now you see, like, this ecosystem is actually getting completed. Now you have somebody like me selling an accessories. Now you'll see, like, more different services around. Yeah. I agree with that. And I have to say, I something wasn't working at one point, and I was so I felt so bad, and I was panicked. And and whatever the problem was, the person was like, "No, it's fine." Like they weren't upset. I don't know why I was so panicked about it. But the point is, the whole community has been so sort of open and supportive and encouraging, and uh, it's just great. I'm a huge fan of that. It reminds me of like the first year of Android. Yes. Well, you say that sadly, though. Why do you say that sadly? Because, <laughs> because then it grows and it changes. Yeah. Because sure. it, it grows and it changes and it loses that like awesome love fest feeling, and then you get bickering and different factions, and it just it turns into high school for a while, and then it no, grows. No, we'll up. never let that happen. 
Well, then it'll grow beyond that. It'll become way bigger, and then all the people who thought they were super important, like us, <laughs> in, in like four years. But we are. We won't matter at all. <laughs> we won't. Like, you see how we already thing? don't really matter, but can you just? Say, but I got there earlier. Oh. Yeah. That's okay. I, I organize the barbecue. That's my role in Android nowadays. You know, I will say this. I was speaking with somebody uh, a few weeks ago who was one of the first on G+, on Google+. Mm -hmm. And Jaris, actually, uh, Cecilia, I think you met her yes. a few days ago. Last week. And, she was, yeah. and she was saying that w her community actually consists of a lot of the first people that were on G+. Yeah. And they, she still keeps in touch with everybody. And it's, it's kind of the same feeling as Glass right now. So, I don't know. I was on G Plus the night before it launched. Oh, she was she was beta. She yeah, was, like she before, was beta not you. before it went public, before it went into the beta stage when it was Google. Oh, really? Only. I was in the night before it went into the non Google only people. Well, I'll say this, Aaron, you will never lose us. Well, no, no, that's not what I was worried about. I mean, I still talk to a lot of the same people that I worked with yeah. early on in an Android. Like Russell, you know, you guys hear me talk about Russell all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's amazing seeing these people who started out early work so hard over time and then go on to have these really successful things that develop out of it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of jealous sometimes. I'm like, you know, yeah, the barbecue is really cool and amazing, but... You know, I don't have a career out of this stuff yet. Are you kidding uh, me? The barbecue is awesome. Yeah, but it doesn't pay my it doesn't pay my mortgage. You know, I mean, <laughs> I, I've seen I've seen Russell Hawley go and become this you know amazing you know uh, online awesome. writer. He is awesome. Uh, I've seen uh, the Cyanogen mod guys go from a bunch of of hackers you know and friends of mine, and now they they just got funded for twenty eight million dollars. I mean, Whoa, it's crazy. OCM. You know, it's it's just seeing all this happen, and several other friends who have gone on and 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 gotten and brought jobs and and careers out of these things that started as hobbies, or, you know, I have I have another friend that was that from her experience at the barbecue went from being an accountant to a a to managing a social media department for a major, you know, national corporation. That's it's really awesome to see. It really is. It is change like that. You know. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for those early days of Android as well. And, you know? and we all meet up at the barbecue. So yeah. barbecue 2014, big Android barbecue 2014. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's it's cool. It's really love fest at first, and then it'll grow and change. And but it's the, still a love fest. <laughs> we just meet at the barbecue 2014. The good relationships will still will will will. will Still be there in three years. I mean, that's like I said. I still talk with Russell daily, and you know, hang out with the CM guys all the time. I was talking to them today, so I mean, it's it's just kind of cool seeing everything grow up. I can't wait for in three years to see where we're all at at that point, you know, and and where the people we've hung out with and gotten to know in the last year where they're at in another two mm -hmm. or three years. You know, when when you're an early adopter and you embrace these things early on. You, you get a lot of really amazing opportunities. And, uh, you get a lot of say in what happens. Yeah, well, yeah. You kind of do. No, you really kind of do. You get a lot of say in the, or the community at first, but Google doesn't seem to listen to us all that much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they want things done their way, but well, yeah, they appreciate yes. what we do, I think. They, they've been very successful having things done their way, though. Yeah. Um, On an individual level, the people at Google love what we do. Yes. On a corporate level... They don't pay much attention. <laughs> so. Wow. So uh, I think that's my been my experience. So next week we are doing the show next week, the day after Christmas, on the twenty sixth. Yes. Yay. It's Italy crazy Italy. that Christmas is next week. I know. I know. Oh my goodness. I had to go into Toys R Us today. It's it's like don't go into Toys R Us if you oh, have to. Oh, I believe you. <laughs> So we all have a bunch of new little uh, new little toys to uh, show off. Yes, <laughs> yes we will. Look what I got! Look what I got! <laughs> so who, who's hosting next week? Um, I think schedule I think rules Cecilia. to Cecilia if you can make it. I think my sister is coming from overseas, so uh, you have to switch me to another dog. Don't speak me for like please. <laughs> <laughs> so then that means we'll, Aaron, we'll you're hosting out. next week. Oh, I see how that worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Noble's turn. He just said he never... Is it, no, wait, is it Noble's turn? It's Noble's turn, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Like how I threw you under the bus there, Noble? <laughs> yeah. <I did. laughs> 
<laughs> nice. Shirk my response. I um, I would have to ask my wife to see whether she would allow me to to be on the show next week. Oh, if we're, we're doing some. Uh, that's the 26th. It's not the 26th. Oh, it isn't. Oh, I thought it was uh, Christmas. It's the 26th. Yeah, it's not Christmas. I was confused. <laughs> I confused Christmas. everybody. So, so, Sorry, guys. So Libby and I will be down in uh, yeah. Florida at this time. I wonder if we can uh, pull out a hangout on air from the beach or something. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. It is so hot down here, by the way. I got to say, I was, it's like, <laughs> it's hot and humid. It is not Christmas weather. Humid. Oh, boo-hoo, you're in Florida. <laughs> I will trade you any day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It snowed on Christmas here last year. That was pretty awesome. I never oh. saw it before. Snowed in Egypt this year. What the hell? Are you serious? That was super I, cool. Yeah. Is, yeah. A friend of ours in Dubai shared some uh, snowing pictures. I, I think the world is ending. I mean, it's it, that's the only. <laughs> that's a good way to end this show, huh? Talking about yes. the end of the world too. Uh, <laughs> Winter is start, coming. Start building your bunkers and, and step, saving your water. Everybody. Oh. Be a, be a I don't like doomsday kind of thought. I don't like it. No, uh, but we will be here next week. We will be here next week. Yeah. And we'll we'll be showing off all our cool Christmas gifts or sucky Christmas gifts, one or the other. <laughs> so with that. Stuff. I help pick it all out. <laughs> We'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Thank you.